Hey everyone, I was in Los Angeles recently and I decided to start documenting the True Crime Tour, which was the last tour uh, we had started before Dearly Departed Tours ended. And it's a, it was a good tour and it was about stories that very, weren't very well known. And, uh, and I thought they deserved to be mentioned and preserved on video, so I hope you like it. Uh, it's a bit of all over the place because you'll see what it's like to drive around Los Angeles with me. I'm always going, oh, and there's that, and there's that. And those of you that know Los Angeles well will notice that it's all over the place. There's no rhyme or reason location-wise to where uh, I'm heading at any given time. With that in mind, I hope you enjoy these short little trips through Hollywood and <laughs> insight into the way my brain works. I just stopped in Hollywood Cemetery for a moment. Uh, you can see that dome that you see right there. That's been recently restored or in the last 10 years or so. And that is where Lana Clarkson is interred. Uh, Lana Clarkson, the famous Phil Spector murder victim. Oh, hello, we got company right there. But yeah, she is in an urn on the upper floor there. And uh, there is, I was in there once and her mother was in there and I spoke to her and I said, I'm so sorry about your daughter, etc." She said, if only he'd apologize. And I'm not kidding. She said that. If he'd only apologized. But the reason I came to the cemetery today, I don't know where this actually happened. But uh, in 1986, April of 1986, 4 a.m., Eric Craig and Ronald Matzik, both in their early 20s, illuminated a mausoleum with a cigarette lighter. So I'm not sure which mausoleum, if it was that one, or if it was the cathedral mausoleum way in the back where I'm going to be. And um, use a stone to break through a marble crypt or remove the remains of a woman who had been dead for about 15 years. They removed the head from the body. The police were called. They're not, they're not sure who called the police, but they entered the cemetery and found Eric Craig crouching beside a car near the cemetery. The decomposing head was found underneath the car. Motive is undetermined. They were jailed in lieu of a $5,000 bail. So that was a crazy severed head story in 1986. And there are a couple of severed head stories on this tour. Uh, I don't know how much of it I'm gonna get done today. But I stopped here to use the, uh, the facilities. Oh, you know what? I'm going to tell you. When I did the Jay Mansfield video, and I went to the White Kitchen, and I and I, I we went to the floor of the White Kitchen because everything's gone, and I said Jay Mansfield stopped here for a pee pee break, and people go, "How old are you? You're so gross and how juvenile, pee pee." But I said that because that's Jay Mansfield. That's what she would have said. So that's what I think anyway. There's another. Beautiful birds, ferocious, ferocious birds. So 1986 severed head. Well, while, while I'm here, I just figured I may as well stop over and see Alfalfa. There's a lot of other celebrities in this cemetery. Oh my gosh, there's so many celebrities in this cemetery. Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Sr. and Darla and, and uh, Judy Garland and Burt Reynolds. And you, I did a video not that long ago walking around the lake. And here is Carl Alfalfa Switzer. Alfalfa from The Little Rascals, our gang. There's Petey the dog. And murdered on January 21st, 1959. He was not a nice person. Uh, by agreement, everyone that knew him, he was he was a pretty miserable man, and got into a, a fight with somebody and ended up dying. I think it's his father, Carl, not Fred Switzer. He developed what's called the Switzer method, which I think we agreed now. It's one of those exercise machines with the band around it that just make you jiggle your fat away. It really works. I was gonna go over there, but I won't, I won't wanna bother anybody. Oh, 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 before I forget. One of my favorite LA moments was, uh, I was driving down Vine Street and the song Walk in the Wild Side came on, Lou Reed. And I just happened to be passing Joe D'Alessandro's apartment. Joe D'Alessandro, who was, Little Joe never once gave it away. Little Joe never once gave it away. And I thought, I wonder if I could do it. 
So I drove like crazy to get over here before the song was over with, and I made it to Holly's grave. Holly came from Miami, FLA. Hitchhiked away across USA. She's a nice lady, too. I got to meet her once. It's Dr. Giggles. Now, I wanted to stop over on El Centro because there's a weird presidential thing over here. These gray buildings. Now, there's an unlikely location. This, these buildings, which I think they were built originally for Paramount Riders, which Paramount's only a couple of blocks from here. During the psychiatric examination performed on John Hinckley after he attempted the assassination of Ronald Reagan in 1981, it came to light that John Hinckley lived in Howard's Weekly Apartments at 1125 North El Centro five years before the crime. He tried to kill President Reagan to win the affection of Jody Foster. This location was on my murder tour which was the newest tour when we shut down. And this pizza joint, which is across the street from an elementary school, this pizza joint was actually a place, I think it was called the Rent-A-Center, or uh, something rents, discount rents, when uh, the murder happened. And now I've got to do this solely voiceover because I don't remember the details, I just happened to be coming by here. According to the police report, on August 21st, 1987, a man by the name of Max Frank rented a gas-powered chainsaw from Jack's Rental Center in this building. He told an employee that he was going to cut some stuff in his backyard. The following day, Max returned the chainsaw. Now, the employee who accepted it placed it under a workbench, and there it sat for a few days until he noticed a foul smell emanating from the saw. The employee examined it, and it appeared clean, except for something in the oil chamber. Opening the saw, he saw what he described as blood and flesh hanging from the mechanisms. He called the police. The police tracked down Max Frank, who said he'd used the chainsaw to cut up an animal that he'd hit and killed with his car. He said it was too big to throw into the trash, so he cut it up and buried it somewhere off the 5 freeway near Fresno. Searching Max Frank's home, blood was found in the bathtub and confirmed to be human. Meanwhile, north of Fresno, a rancher happened to find the head and torso of a male in his late teens with a punk rock style haircut. He'd been dead for two days. More of his body parts were found wrapped in a sheet near the guardrail near Magic Mountain Amusement Park. The victim was identified as 18-year-old male street prostitute Tracy Newt. Newt's cause of death was actually a gunshot wound to the head. There's no indication that he was alive during his dismemberment in Max Frank's bathtub. Max Frank was sentenced to 25 years to life for killing Tracy Newt in a, what was called, homosexual rage. He died in prison in 1997. So that's the building where Hillel Slavic died of an overdose. Sync has connected to your Thank you. That's the building where Hillel Slovak died of an overdose. But next we're going to a severed head story. One of my favorites. And as I told you once in Hollywood Cemetery, there's gonna be another. So this building was the last home of a man named Hervé Medellin. Medellin, I believe is how you pronounce his name. And he lived here with his boyfriend uh, in the top floor on the left. That's according to the news reports from that day. Now, what made this really an incredible story in Los Angeles lore is because his boyfriend murdered him in that apartment up there. And, well, a while later, a couple of people were walking in Griffith Park, dog walkers. And one of the dogs was, you know, running around through the, the you know, foraging, really. It's Griffith Park is a huge place, and it was, you know, running around in the bushes or whatever, and came out with a bag. And... According to the legend, the dog brought the bag to the owners, plopped it down, and Hervé, they didn't know who it was, Hervé's head was in the bag. 
and upon further searching I think they found part of his hand or something like that. Uh, I don't know if the rest of his body was ever found, but Hervé was murdered by his boyfriend here. Boyfriend Paul, uh, you know, masqueraded as a grieving boyfriend for quite a long time while going through, uh, I think his, I think he collected art. And uh, there was all sorts of theories about what happened. It was a long time before they actually identified his body, I think. And for the longest time, his body was at the coroner's office. I mean, in refrigeration, just his head and, you know, they call, everyone called him the severed head because for the longest time, nobody knew who he was. And the boyfriend was ultimately convicted, but the judge just called it, you know, deplorable. It was so deplorable and so insane and so ruthless. And I don't know, it was, it was a amazing story and of course the Amazon guy stops right the hell there because that's what happens when you do videos so Hervé Medellin's home where he was murdered now this right here is the exact spot where Lady Gaga's dog walker got shot. Uh, the ring camera was on that house and he was coming up this way with the dogs. <laughs> and uh, I'm laughing, it's not funny. This is the exact location where Lady Gaga's dog walker was shot, walking her two French bulldogs. Uh, the ring camera was taken from that house and you see the car pull up right about here and uh, the struggle and then shot the guy who's recovered, thankfully. She was uh, offered a $500,000 reward, no questions asked. And here's the kicker. The guy that shot the, uh, the kid got 21 years in prison. The woman who was his colleague is suing for the $500,000 because it was supposed to be no questions asked. I mean, how gross are people? But the poor guy was shot like right here. Up ahead on the right, there is a billboard for a, a program called Waco, The Aftermath on Netflix. And I just finished watching a Waco documentary not that long ago and I did not know there is actually a Waco related location here in Los Angeles and that surprised me and we're going there now Kat Von D's old place coming up on the right is the old Chaplin Studios now is the uh, it was A and M Records for the longest time. Herb Alpert and Jerry Moss, the Carpenters, We Are the World, and now it belongs to the Jim Henson Company. Strippers. Brad Pitt used to work at a chicken. I think it was El Pollo Loco, right over there on the corner, and he was a waiter there, I guess. Uh, no, 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 actually, he was dressed like a chicken. That was one of his first jobs, dressed like a chicken, uh, waving at uh, waving at people driving by, trying to get people in there. Now look at it, beautiful. But funny, because when he when he started the movie Troy, the, doc, the uh, billboard was right there. So I thought it was kind of perfect that, uh, that Brad Pitt was dressed as a chicken, and then Troy, Troy, uh, poster was right over there. Now I gotta pay attention. Oh, I wonder what I'm doing. People are gonna be, man, there's so much stuff around here. I'll have to do another drive at some point because everywhere you look, there's here and there, and so many places have, uh, are worthy of mentioning and I'm actually have to shut my mouth because <laughs> for because I, I would just be going forever and ever but coming up on the right is the guitar center and the guitar center has a association with Waco
then i met david in ninety one. i was a guitar center in hollywood. and these two guys were looking at one of the drum sets. and they said, you're a drummer? and i had drumsticks in my hand, so i said, yeah. this is dave koresh. and dave just looked at me and he said you don't even realize how every day there are forces carving out your path and where you're gonna be. and when he said it, it kind of blew my mind because that's how my life was. so you go to texas? that's how i go to texas. Now, I gotta get out of town, literally. The Sunset Grill, down at the Sunset Grill. Yes, that's where it comes from. And coming up on the right was Rodney Bingenheimer's Old English Discotheque. Uh, next block. That's Rodney Bingenheimer's Old, there. Rodney at Bingenheimer's Disco. Chipotle, that's where Hugh Grant picked up Divine Brown. I gotta, it's gonna take, it takes, you're like, I always say driving in LA is like driving on a Hot Wheels track. You cannot turn. You have to go like miles out of your way to turn. And I just did. I hope you enjoyed this little slice of my tour. Uh, there'll be more to come, so thank you very much for your time and for your attention. And until next time. You heard me. I'm laughing. It's not funny.